Here we are, folks. Here we are. We are finally here at 2026. It seems like an absolute age ago since we were looking at this very main menu screen and clicking into the option to build our own engine for this upcoming season. That was a whole season 16 episodes ago in this My Team Career Mode series, but we are now here, season 4, and it's 2026 in the timeline. If you're new around here and you're unfamiliar with whatever on earth I'm talking about, well, let me quickly recap and introduce to you Project 26. In this exciting new concept feature designed by yours truly, we can build our own engine for the start of the in-game 2026 season, which is season four in this My Team Career Mode on F1 23. Over the course of the last season I've been doing of this career mode, I've been in Investing money and R&D into building this engine for this season. I've had to do what they do in real life. Balancing my cash and development for the season we're in and then also for the upcoming season. And over the course of 2025, we spent 50 million to make this build an engine project happen. And we put away 12,000 R&D points to ensure that we have the highest tier of engine block, fuel system, and ERS for this brand new engine that we have made from scratch in partnership with a real life manufacturer. Because of course, part of this entire mod, when I first introduced it to you guys 16 episodes ago, I got you guys to vote on which real life manufacturing brand I should partner with. They each had their own individual perks and bonuses that came along with them, and also a slight difference in how much they were willing to pay us to actually make this partnership happen. And I can reveal to you now, after two months, since that vote went out, 24,000 of you have voted, which is incredible. Thank you so much for taking part in that. And it's a resounding majority win for Lamborghini with 52% of the vote. So that means we are partnering with Lamborghini and bringing them into Formula One. But that's not the only car brand that of course is entering Formula One in 2026, is it? Tonight's top story here on Sky Sports. Formula One in 2026 is expected to be an all new look with new engine regulations. Now with 100% synthetic fuels enticing a wave of new manufacturers entering the sport. You may recall that back in 2022, Audi confirmed their entrance into Formula One. They will be buying the Sauber team, formerly known as Alfa Romeo, and be going forwards as Audi Sport in 2026. The gigantic American manufacturer Ford will be partnering with Red Bull. A technical partnership will see them make their own engine for the very first time in the sport as Red Bull look to take their team to even higher heights. Another American partnership that will also be entering Formula 1 this year are Andretti with Cadillac as they partner with General Motors to become a successful bidder for the outgoing Alpha Tauri team. And finally, our sources have confirmed that Arava Archer Racing, the reigning constructors champions from 2025, will be partnering with the Italian outfit Lamborghini. The exotic car brand hasn't been involved in Formula 1 in any shape or form since the early 1990s. Their more recent motorsport outings include GT Class Racing and also Hypercar Class at Le Mans. So how exactly will they fare in the top flight of motorsport in Formula 1 for the very first time directly? I guess we're going to have to find Find out. And find out we shall, as it's now time to transition into 2026 and introduce to you everything going on in this upcoming season. Starting off with our brand new set of overalls 
helmet as well to go along with it. A nice electric racing green, very much matching a colour I really just picture anytime I think Lamborghini. And a colour, of course, as you would have seen in the previous segment, that Lamborghini actually go racing with in real life in various different classes. But going into 2026, we have a lot more to talk about and to look at as we now come to the R&D analysis screen. So this gives us a great overview at how we're looking in terms of the pecking order going into this upcoming season with the chassis, powertrain, and aerodynamic. And we've also got an overlook at some of the engine development hurdles we're going to have to try and overcome early on in this season. But let's take a quick analysis of everything going on here. So chassis and aerodynamics wise, we're of course where we were at the end of 2025. There was an R&D regulation reset in the game, which only affected the engine and durability, very much keeping in, in line with our 2026 storyline of the new engines coming in. So our chassis and aero, we're pretty damn good. We're still in the top four or five, you know, very, very close stuff between the kind of top teams and powertrain wise. Now, this is where it really matters. Now, the overall engine performance that we're going to see in the races is that engine performance that we, we developed plus the upgrades that we've got in game doing you know the small little upgrades you know what you know minor major ultimate upgrades those are all added on top of the base engine performance and that base engine performance was determined obviously by everything we did in season three in 2025 by spending 12,000 R and D points that could have gone to something else we put it into the engine so we've got the maximum base performance we could have got with this mod and then we have all these upgrades added on but of course building your own engine from scratch you know, it's going to come with a few hiccups, you know, making an engine from scratch. It's not easy. There are always things to overcome, some hurdles to overcome. And that's exactly what you're seeing in the bottom right here with our engine development hurdles. So we've got four different problems to try and solve over the course of this season. We're going to be faced with an overheating internal combustion engine, gearbox sink issues, fuel efficiency problems and overall MGK power not being at the maximum it could be at the very start of the season. So, we, you know, we've done a lot of great work. We've built uh, the best engine we could have possibly built and it's going to be powerful, but we're going to have these problems that we're going to have to try and solve along the way. Just like in real life, when there's new engine regulations, it'll take time for us to find that reliability and find a way to op operate the entire power unit very smoothly. But once we do, we are definitely going to be absolutely cooking. And speaking of cooking, we're also cooking up a great new looking car. Project 26 is going even further as we now have a 2026 chassis building option where we have got three different options to choose from. We've got option one here, kind of like a Ferrari style nose, a bit more of a traditional just downwash uh, side pod development. Option number two would be kind of like a Red Bull McLaren sort of route with the nose shape at the front, the front wing angles and then the side pods having that downwash but with a slight little bit of tunneling and also very intricate work to really get that sculpted look on the side pods. And finally option number three kind of going along the lines of the Aston Martin Mercedes shape with uh, quite large tunneling on the side pods and the nose being quite rounded compared to the other two. The chassis we pick here does not affect performance though. It is just purely aesthetic and this is something that I've wanted the F1 game to actually do for us for my team career mode and today I'm doing it for this series. So I'm just going to choose which one I think is going to look the best for our Lamborghini livery. And for me, that is going to be option number two. So with that, with our custom chassis chosen, our engine is now built. I now present to you Arava Archer Racing Lamborghini. We have a beauty if i do say so myself we have an absolute beauty i have so quickly fallen in love with this car 
with this livery. We've of course gone with the kind of electric vault green that Lamborghini raced with in real life in various different motorsport classes. But we've got a lot of little details going on with this livery. The two stars on the engine cover either side of my logo for our two constructors championships so far in this series. We've got some returning sponsors from previous seasons, previous F1 games. Kind of, you know, by now you guys know some of my kind of favourite sponsors to bring back in some of my custom liveries. As you saw with the overalls, of course, Nike and Jordan return as our kit supplier. I just had to put my favourite drum and bass artist, Dimension, on either side of the cockpit. And there is a lot of sponsors that have actually come from Lamborghini, that are actual real-life sponsors of Lamborghini in their other categories. And speaking of that, we've got a lot of also small little Lamborghini details, the chevrons all throughout the livery, lifted from the very GT livery I showed you guys earlier in the news segment. And those same chevrons don on the wheel covers as well. And I've tried my best to make that nose look as much like as an actual Lamborghini supercar nose as I can with the kind of triangling. And obviously you can't miss it on the side pods. It's an Italian car brand, so I just had to put a luxury Italian brand on the side pods. We've gone with Gucci. I think it fits very nicely with the exotic vibes that Lamborghini brings. So we've built our own engine. We've built a new chassis. We've got a new livery. We've got new overalls, a helmet. I think one of the last things we need to look at then is our teammates. And this was a very interesting decision for me to make this season because of how 2025 went, how last season went. Because Pierre Gasly was a very, very strong teammate. Probably one of the strongest teammates I've had in, in the last two, three years of playing the F1 game, really. You know, he got more wins and more pole positions than we did. Overall, I still outscored him eventually with how Abu Dhabi went. But up until Abu Dhabi, he was going to outscore me. And actually, to be fair, he got quite unlucky at Yas Marina, to be honest. So really, he actually maybe deserved to outscore us overall in that last season. And so for the very first time, I think, in my team career history, I am actually choosing to stick with a teammate for more than one season. I hope that's going to be music to some of you guys' ears because I know there's plenty of criticism of uh, the fact that I change teammates every single season. But to be honest, even I couldn't deny there was no good reason to drop Pierre Gasly. Like, he actually carried the team for a lot of last season. So he deserves to now enjoy the fruits of his labor by driving now this new AAR Lamborghini car. So that is why we have signed the Frenchman back to our team. He's 100 rated and I'm sure he's going to be just as good as he was last season. And now with our entire team admin sorted ahead of the brand new season, it's time to look ahead at our 2026 calendar. We're going to kick things off at the Australian Grand Prix down under in that classic opening round before then hopping over to stateside for the Las Vegas Grand Prix. Then in a big twist, we've got the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix for round number three early on in the season rather than the season finale. Then we come to the European portion of the calendar. Spain, Monaco, Austria, Silverstone, Portugal, Belgium, Monza, and then we go to the flyaways to bring out the season. We've got Singapore, the new layout, of course, Canada, Japan, and then ending off with two back-to-back -back races in the Middle East, Qatar and the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, before going to a fan favourite for a season finale. It's Sao Paulo, it's the Brazilian Grand Prix, to round this out in 2026. And with that, now let's look at the drivers that will be tackling this calendar, it's time for the driver transfers into 2026. Of course, you already know AAR, Lamborghini, myself, and Pierre Gasly. For the first time, we retain a teammate in my team career mode, and it's a good one at that. And we're going to need, hopefully, Gasly to perform at the same level he did last season, because although we do have, obviously, hopefully, a very good engine in the back of our car, we're going to have ferocious competition still. And off the back of last season, for sure, one of those teams is going to be McLaren. 
But their driver lineup is a little bit different this year. We've got the reigning world champion from last season, Oscar Piastri, alongside the New Zealander, Liam Lawson. Yep, following an inconsistent season for Valtteri Bottas and more so a horrific development in the finale, they have dropped the Flying Finn. If you recall, in the finale of last season, Valtteri Bottas failed to help Oscar Piastri at all. In fact, he hindered his teammate in that fight versus Max Verstappen, holding him up for what was nearly about a lap before letting him by. So despite that, Piastri still went on to win the championship, but McLaren didn't take too kindly to Bottas not helping out his would-be world champion teammate. So they have dropped the Finn and they have gone for youth. After spending plenty of time in slower cars and at the back of the grid, Liam Lawson is being thrust to the front in Formula 1 going into 2026. And where has Valtteri Bottas gone to? Well, he's gone to Alfa Romeo Haas alongside the Brazilian Felipe Drogovic. It's all change at Alfa Romeo Haas. Bottas needing to find his seat. Alfa Romeo Haas looking for an experienced driver to take them into this new era of Formula 1. So they've gone with the cool head of Valtteri Bottas. He'll be irked, but he can't do much about his situation. And then Felipe Drogovic, an F2 driver that we haven't seen feature in Formula 1 so far on this year's game, now gets his chance at the crack of the whip. And a team that might be close for company on the grid this year for them is Williams, who are now in a golf Williams livery with Nico Hülkenberg returning to the team after so, so long alongside Joe Guanyu. Nico Hülkenberg having a bit of a full circle moment, driving once again for the Williams team, maybe in the right back end of his career. Although, if you look at real life, maybe Hülkenberg will be keep on going until about 2050 at this rate. Joe Guanyu alongside him, he didn't actually have a seat last season at any of the teams, so he actually returns to Formula 1 now with the engine regulations, Maybe this is a chance to have a bit of a reset and go again in his Formula 1 career. And a man that knows all about resetting his career and going on and on and on is one Spaniard, Fernando Alonso. Yes, that's right. That is right. Max Verstappen has left Red Bull as they become Red Bull Ford. Lando Norris remains at the team. This will now be his third full season at Red Bull. But this all stems from the finale again. Just like McLaren, Verstappen was just so irked at Lando Norris overtaking him and trying to fight for the win when he wasn't in the championship fight himself and he had enough so he's called it quits. He's left Red Bull and that has left now a gap for Fernando Alonso to fill because equally Alonso was so annoyed at the drop off from Aston Martin. They were looking so hot at the end of season two and season three they just did never really delivered. So Fernando Alonso this is maybe one final crack at the whip to try and win a third third world championship 67 focus though so last season really did a number on him so we'll have to see how that one pans out but speaking of the team that he left Aston Martin they still don a white livery to celebrate their partnership with Honda Aston Martin Honda and now alongside Alexander Albon who remains at the team is the Japanese driver Yuki Tsunoda with Alpha Tauri exiting the grid Yuki Tsunoda had nowhere to go but Aston Martin, obviously powered by the Japanese manufacturer. It made sense. It was a match made in heaven and Honda pushed for this move quite a lot. So although maybe Aston Martin would have liked a stronger pairing and maybe a stronger driver to replace Fernando Alonso, they've got Sonoda, who, to be fair, has put in some decent results in this series. So we'll have to see how this one pans out. Albon, we, we've seen him perform well at times when the car works, but that's the big if when the car works and it didn't last season. Can it do so in 2026? And now we come to a team that I'm sure a lot of you have been eagerly anticipating. We spoke about Alpha Tauri exiting and that is because Andretti Cadillac have bought their spot in Formula 1. This is Andretti in F1. Sergio Perez leads the way alongside the American Logan Sargent. Logan jumped ship from one American team to the 
newest American team on the block from Alfa Romeo Haas last season to here, Andretti Cadillac. And Sergio Perez, well, he jumped ship, of course, from Sauber last season to lead this team. The, the thought of leading a brand new team in Formula 1 was a massive plus of Sergio Perez. And of course, as a Mexican, big, big fan base in the American side of the world. So it just made sense also for Andretti to have Perez, someone with that experience and fan base, to be leading the team into their first Formula 1 outing. How will Andretti Cadillac do? Well, that's a big question mark. We're going to have to find out. On the flip side, a team that I reckon actually could be a bit of a dark horse this season are Alpine. They retain their driver lineup of Daniel Ricciardo and Esteban Ocon that they've had since last season. The old Renault pairing here. Now in a darker blue for Alpine this season. A bit more of a French vibe going on with their livery. And a couple of times last season... They were actually in some pretty high positions. You know, Ocon especially popped up a few random times, you know, in the top five at the very end of last season. And they were upgrading rapidly last season. So I actually peg them as a dark horse. Keep an eye on them. I reckon Ricardo and Ocon could be mixing it up a little bit and maybe surprising ourselves and other top teams at where they place early on and throughout the entire season, actually. So for once, actually, I'm quite excited by Alpine as a team in the game, at least. I think they've got a lot to come, maybe, for this season. But now we come to the biggest pair of driver transfers on this grid for 2026. Max Verstappen alongside Mick Schumacher for Scuderia Ferrari. Yep, that's right. Verstappen left Red Bull and has joined Ferrari to lead them into this new era. Could Verstappen be the driver that finally brings them to success in the modern era of Formula One? And the Schumacher name is back in red. It's so amazing to see Schumacher having come back into Formula One last season, impressed a lot with, what was it, two wins last season. So you can see why Schumacher has been signed by Ferrari along alongside Max Verstappen, but it's not all positivity from Ferrari because the reason they've had to sign these two drivers is because Leclerc and Sainz both actively chose to leave the Scuderia. After such an embarrassing and poor season in 2025, they have to try and turn it around with an all-new lineup into 2026. We know how good Verstappen is, we know how good Schumacher's been in this series, but can Ferrari actually deliver the car to do something good? We're going to have to see. Mercedes they'll be hoping they can deliver a car and build on what was a pretty strong end to 2025 as Russell and Schumacher battle for top spots consistently qualified at the front and they've only gone and signed Charles Leclerc. Leclerc left Ferrari wanting to sign for Mercedes. So Mercedes made the tough decision to drop Schumacher even though he was the one who won two races last season in favour for arguably on paper one of the strongest pairings on the grid. Russell and Leclerc. As you can see, a strikingly different look for this season. Gone is the all black. Gone is the chunky car and it's back to the slim boy for Mercedes with a striking white silverish livery with Vestas becoming a major sponsor for the Silver Arrows. Mercedes managed to deliver Lewis Hamilton's eighth world championship in season one of this series. Can they now deliver a first world championship for either Russell or Leclerc? And finally, the final team on this grid Audi Sport, formerly known as Sauber last season. It's now an Audi Works outfit. Carlos Sainz Sr. has some experience working with Audi in rally and clearly his son has taken some advice and so Carlos Sainz Jr. joins the Audi Works team for 2026. Again, like his former Ferrari teammate, Sainz chose to leave the prancing horses after such a poor campaign last time out. So he was on on the lookout for a team to lead, to grow with, and that's certainly going to be Audi Sport for sure. Alongside him, Teo Porcher, a Sauber Academy driver, makes a lot of sense for Teo Porcher to step in alongside Carlos Sainz. He's already quite highly rated for, to say he was an F2 driver in this game. And with that, those are the 11 teams that take on Formula 1 in 2026. It is quite the lineup. There are some unbelievable 
driver pairings or just driver transfers that have occurred. Big names in big teams and especially with all the new brands entering Formula 1, there are a lot more of those kind of pairings. But finally, just before we round out this pre-season episode, we're actually going to go through a bit of the actual pre-season itself because there's quite some way in the activity timeline till the Australian Grand Prix. And that's going to mean we actually earn enough R&D to maybe go ahead and purchase our first upgrade of the season. I've got my eye on only one upgrade available to us and it's going to be on the aerodynamic side as we just go through the activity timeline, putting in a press tour, uh, of course, and a, a driver camp to try and boost the focus of Pier Gas as much as we can. But now let's go to the upgrades and go and look at that final upgrade on the aero side. It's the ultimate rear downforce upgrade. We have enough uh, R&D points to purchase that. It'll come in time for round number two of 2026. And with that, once that comes in, we'll be maxed out on the aero. So I think we'll only have some chassis upgrades and some minor engine upgrades to go before we've got a maxed out car. And then, of course, it's just about trying to deal with those engine development hurdles that we have to do with our custom engine. But that has been then our pre-season episode for our F1 23 My Team Career Mode Season 4. In-game, it's 2026. And for this entire season, I'll be noting the series as an F1 2026 Mod Career Mode. Because as you can see, as you can tell, I've put in a lot of work to try and build up this season as much as we can. You know, the entirety of season three was a build up for this season. All the livery mods that we've had, the, the all the mad driver transfers, the work I've put into our own team with the Lamborghini mod, with the livery, the engine that you'll see obviously in the next episode. With all the work, I think this season deserves its own kind of naming from the My Team series. And speaking of all the mods, by the way, if you want to check out any of the mods I've used, used in this series and check the links down below in the description to check out some amazing mods made by some fantastic PC modders of this F1 game community. A massive thank you for them for doing amazing work and putting it out there for free on Race Department, but crediting them all down below in the description. But that has been the pre-season for this F1 2026 season project 26. Guys, if you have enjoyed it, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for this upcoming season and all the episodes that come with it. 16 rounds of flat out action. Until the next one, guys, I hope you enjoy the rest your day and I'll leave you with one final present. Yeah!